Captain Coder here, and a crew member asked, how could I create a dynamic map of an area that is revealed as the player navigates within it? In the last video, we demonstrated how to create a map overlay using a render texture, and we're gonna continue building upon that concept, adding in a second render texture that actually will track everywhere the player is seen, and then we're gonna combine those two textures together uh, using a shader and don't let the shader scare you. It's really, really a simple shader and I'm gonna explain it step by step. We're gonna combine those two using a shader that will mask one onto the other. But before we hop in, I wanna remind you that you can ask your own questions on Discord at Captain Coders Academy or catch me streaming live at captaincoder.live. All right, let's hop in. The next feature I would like to add would be to make it such that the whole map isn't revealed at the start, but instead, as the player moves around, we reveal the areas the player has visited. So we're gonna put a circle around the player. It's gonna be the player's reveal radius, maybe their field of view, we might call it. And as they move about, it's gonna reveal those sections of the map. Let's start by adding a circle above the player, similar to the way we did with the triangle. Let's go ahead and create a 2D object here is going to be our circle and this is going to be the area that is revealed as we move around. Rotate it 90 to make it flat above the player and I'm going to scale it up to be 20 by 20 here. See what that looks like on our map. Yeah that seems pretty reasonable as the player moves about that's what we will reveal on the map. The next thing we would like to do is we we want to make it let me get my map open here so we can see it put the game view side by side as well. Uh, so we can view it and pull the game window out. Pull it open a little bit so we can watch this. As the player moves around, we want that section of the map to remain visible. Remain visible, not just where the circle is, but we want the circle to sort of spread. Imagine as the circle moves, the white area will continue to expand. We can do this by creating a second map camera. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my first map camera. And this one's, I'm gonna to set to be called our revealed camera. Uh, we want them to match. So they're sort of at the same perspective and it matches in that way. This revealed camera, I only want it to see the circle. I don't want to see anything except the circle. And how we are going to do this is by adding a layer to the, and apply it to our circle here. I'm gonna create a layer called revealed area. And on our circle here, I'm going to set the layer to revealed area. And on our revealed camera, I only want to see the revealed area. So now we just get that circle on our revealed camera. We also want to remove it from our map camera. We don't want the map camera to actually show the circle on it. So on our map camera and our cooling mask, we're going to remove the revealed area. And now it will show the same there. What we want to do next is with our revealed camera, we're going to map this to another texture, which is our revealed texture. I'm going to duplicate our map texture here. Again, you want the sizes of these to match exactly. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this revealed texture. And I'm going to say that our target texture is this revealed texture. So on our revealed camera, we will draw to our revealed texture like so. And we want to make it so as we move around, as the player moves, that circle doesn't clear. It's going to save, not necessarily save, but not, not overwrite as the camera moves around. And we can do this by changing the clear flags on our revealed camera. So we'll go to our revealed camera. We're going to say that we don't clear. We don't clear. And we will save that there. Now, as the player moves around, notice the revealed camera doesn't show just the circle, but in fact shows everywhere that the player has visited. Once we have this, what we want to do is we actually want to apply a mask. So everywhere that is white on this texture, we want to mask that onto our map texture. Say, show only the parts on our map texture that are also on our revealed texture. To do this, we're gonna use a shader 
And don't let shaders scare you. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. I think we only have to add two or maybe three lines of code to make the whole thing work. So don't let that frighten you. To get started, we're gonna create a texture here. Sorry, not a texture, we're gonna create a material. So right click material, it's gonna be our map material. Okay, and the idea is that this material is going to be a projection of those two uh, textures mapped onto each other. To do this, we're going to create a shader. So right click create, come down to shader, and we're going to start with the image effect shader. We're going to call this our map reveal shader. Okay, and we can add this to our map material here. And by doing this, we'll get a spot where we can apply a texture. Let's take our map texture and drag that in there. So to follow those steps again, I created a shader. I made it the default image effect shader. We're gonna edit that in a second. We added that shader to our material. And then we took the map texture and set that to be the base texture here. Okay. This default texture gets rendered actually just inverts all of the colors of that texture. So you'll notice it's just sort of a weird purplish version and the black comes white and the green becomes purple. That just happens to be the opposite there. Let's look at our map now. Rather than using this texture, go ahead and set that texture to none. Instead, we're gonna use this new material that we have. So it's gonna be the material we, we look at and that material will be rendered to that raw image. Next, we're gonna update our shader to sort of clean this up and add in two textures. Let's open up the map shader here. Take a look at it just so you can, we can walk through a little bit. This main texture is a property. This is what shows up over here. We need a second texture to pull in. So I'm actually just gonna duplicate this code here. I'm gonna change it from main text for texture to mask texture. I'm gonna set the word here, mask texture. I'm gonna change this one to map texture just to show you what that looks like. If we come back over here and come to my map material, let's go ahead and click. Uh, I think discard is all I need. Okay. You'll notice now I have map texture. That's when we already applied and we have mask texture. We're gonna go ahead and put our mask there. Now we've attached both of these textures. Next, we need to make it so that way we sort of filter out this white here. We're gonna add in an alpha channel, which is relatively easy to do. Um, all we have to do is add in the following code here. In our sub shader section here, we're gonna add in a blend source alpha. We're saying, where's the alpha coming from? We're gonna say one minus source alpha. And this is basically gonna say, when, it's, when we have that black in there, just turn that into the alpha. So if I come back after doing that, we'll see that we end up with a nice alpha mask. Just have our, our map rendered in that way. The next thing we want to do is down here, if we scroll all the way down to fragment shader, this is where we actually say, what color are each of the pixels? The default thing they're doing with this one is just inverting colors. Take the color one and we subtract it out. If we get rid of this, go and just comment that out you'll see we get our texture back. It's just the colors that we see. What we want to do is we want to only keep, we want to only keep values on our revealed texture here. So we're gonna create a sampler on line 43 in mine here. I wanna make this be our mask texture. And then I'm gonna pull out the color of our mask texture here. Create a new line here that I'm gonna call this our mask. So notice above we're point color. Here's the color we're pulling out from the texture, the main texture. We want to pull the color out from our mask texture. So we have the color of the main texture. We have the color of the mask texture. And so since our mask is white, it's going to be a value of one. And if it's not, it'll be black, which is a value of zero. And we can just now just multiply the color that we have at that position by either one or zero, which happens to be our mask. And now when we come back here, we see that I have this chopped out here with our shader. So let's go over that one more time with our shader. I set it so that we have a mask texture that we can add in to our 
material. So we have our map texture and our mask texture. I set it to blend such that there's an alpha channel, which says just make the black part invisible. We get a sampler for our mask texture. We abstract, sorry, extract the mask color at each pixel and multiply it into our original color. And thus we have this, so let's check it out when we run it. Should start out with just a circle. And as we move around, we actually will slowly reveal the map and see it. And we can toggle that on and off. Now, one little thing about this that I think is a little bit ugly, we're gonna add a little bit of a flare to it, is that we, the map isn't entirely obvious. I wanna add a little box around it here. So I wanna add in a box around it. So that way our map, we can see the area that we have yet to reveal. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and download this here by uh, Garage Garrick, it looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna post a link to this as well. This is the Open Game Art Brass Dialog. We'll go ahead and download this and I'm gonna add it into my project. So this is gonna sort of be the background of my canvas. I need to make sure that this is a 2D texture. So we're, it, we wanna make it a sprite. Right now it's a 3D texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this sprite, the texture type. I'm gonna make it a 2D sprite, part of our UI. And then I want to make it so that it is nine sliced. I want it to scale nicely. So in the mesh type, I'm gonna select it's a full rectangle, click apply down here. And then I want to edit the sprite and set these. I, I happen to know that the borders happen to be 10 pixels in on each side. So I'm gonna do 10, 10, 10, and 10 here down in my sprite editor. So this will make it so it scales nice around the outsides. Go ahead and click apply to this, close that out. And now in my canvas, sure, let's go ahead and save that. In my canvas, I want to add in an image. I'm gonna make this image be my border. So I select this image here, come down to the image. I'm gonna make this the border. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up. Let's make this 400 by 400. It's right there in the center of my screen. My map, I'm gonna make a child element of this image. And right now, if we were to go into 2D mode and look at what this looks like, I need to add a little border to it. This map's gonna fill up that whole space. And so I'm gonna actually set the pivot to just fill its parent, but add in a 10 pixel border on each side. So it should scale it down so it fits nicely in there. And on our toggle now, our player, rather than toggling our map, we wanna to toggle, let's change this to uh, immature map container. Come to our player. I'm gonna make it so that the map toggles our map container rather than the map internally. Now when I run, I should get a relatively nice, maybe not the most beautiful, but nice little simple thing here for our map to show up. So we have an idea of how big our universe is. And as we move around, it sort of fills in that map for us. All right, not too hard. Get a little bit of a an intro to, to shaders there, just so you know, I don't know a ton about shaders, but I know enough just to get this part done to apply that mask. So I wanna know how are you gonna use this in your games, in your projects? What are your plans with this? Are you gonna make an even cooler texture that sort of adds a fog of war, shadow type stuff to it? Let me know in the comments below what you're gonna use. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye bye